Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, trash, trash and more trash, it's my weekly wrap up. It's the 6th of August today, the first week of Garb August is nearly over and I just wanted to start by saying a huge thank you to everybody who's been involved in Garb August in whatever way. Um, whether you're one of the co-hosts, whether you're another booktuber who's taking part, whether you're a subscriber who's taking part, whether you're just someone who's commented on one of the Garb August videos. Um, it's really appreciated. It has warmed my trashy heart to see so many people getting involved in Garb August. Um, it's been a long time coming. We've been talking about it for quite, for quite a while, so it's wonderful for it finally to be here. Um, and I'm enjoying it enormously so far, and I hope that everyone else is too. Um, so normal format for this weekly wrap up video, um, I'll talk about the books I've read this week, I'll talk about what I think I'm probably going to read in the week ahead um, and I'll talk about some channel stuff so I'll let you know what's been on the channel in the last week or so uh, in case you missed it and I'll let you know what's coming in the week ahead. So let's get on with the books. Um, so week one of Garb August you will remember is Sex and or Violent. Um, We've also got the Garb August bingo card. I will flash up a picture of that. Um, so I've been trying to tick stuff off uh, the Garb August bingo card as we go, and I've managed to get eight squares ticked off already, which is pretty good. Um, and some of those squares, in fact, I think probably a number of those squares have been ticked off multiple times already um, because I'm reading uh, some really trashy trash, which, uh, which covers um, a lot of different aspects of trash. Um, so let's get on. So first thing um, I read for Garb August was Naked Came the Stranger by Penelope Ash. Uh, Penelope Ash being a fake name um, for a group of um, like book critics basically who got together and decided to write a trashy book um, because they were appalled by um, how, how all the really popular books um, in the States were, in their opinion, poorly written and full of sex. Um, so they came up with Naked Came the Stranger, and actually it was a lot of fun. So I've done a I've done a full review of this, which went up yesterday. Um, so watch that if you want to know more. Um, I have I have problems with the whole concept behind it. Whilst I think it's an interesting concept, I also think you know I also question their motivations. Um, but I did really I did really quite enjoy the book. It was it was <laughs> it was very rude and very silly, um, and a lot of fun. So it's about a woman. Um, who discovers her husband has been unfaithful to her um, and decides to get revenge by sleeping with as many men as she can, basically. <laughs> so it was it was very tragic, but but fun. Um, next up was Snakes by Guy and Smith. So Guy and Smith, who died uh, how long ago did he die? A couple of years ago, um, is a very like very well known. Um, but not very well respected, I think it would be fair to say. British horror author who churned out loads of like cheap, nasty paperbacks like this um, in the 70s and 80s in particular. I mean, he was still writing right up until his death, um, but at a slower rate, but he really churned stuff out at quite a rate um, in the 80s in particular. And his best known series of books are the Crabs books, which are quite fun. Um, this was this was less fun, but it was okay. So it's about a it's like a circus or something like that that's been closed down, and they're transporting um, all of the snakes that were part of the circus, or maybe it was like a travelling zoo. I can't even remember. I only read it a few days ago. Um, they're getting transported, and the lorry that's transporting them is involved in a crash, and all the snakes escape, and then terrorise this small village. Um, it was, I mean, it was okay. Some of the snaky bits were quite fun. Um, uh, and it was, you know, the violence was quite entertaining, uh, which is what you want in a, in a trashy horror novel like this. But it, but it just didn't really grasp, it, it didn't really grip me at all. Um, I can't remember who any of the characters were. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, I returned to something a bit more reliable after that, so I read book 13 in the Executioner series by Don Pendleton. Um, so, oh, and I haven't said, so this ticked off the Killer Animals square on the Garbingo card, um, and this ticked off uh, a book I wouldn't read on the bus, a dirty book, um, news tea on the cover, and a book written under a pseudonym. Um, so that was four, and then this one uh, ticked off um, a men's adventure book, 
a book with more than 100 or a book from a series with more than 100 entries there's like several hundred entries in the executioner series um, and a book with a cigarette advert uh, within it so this has an advert for Kent cigarettes um, and yeah this was this was fun so this is um, as the title would suggest Mac Bolan the executioner goes to New York uh, goes to New York doesn't go to New York goes to Washington um, and takes on corruption there and you know like political corruption so the mafia kind of trying to get into politics through lobbying and things like that um, and it was, you know, it had all the kind of action and stuff like that you'd expect from an executioner book. It was a lot of fun, and it was nice reading it in this, um, this old, uh, you know, kind of original vintage copy as well um, from the states. I much prefer the look of the US editions to the UK editions. Um, and sadly, most of the most of the executioner books I've got are UK ones for the early ones, anyway. Um, the other thing to note about this is it does say on the cover there. Um, so 7 million copies sold, major film series coming soon. Um, unfortunately, the major film series didn't come. Um, I think there has been more recently um, an attempt to film them. I can't remember. There was a quite famous actor who was attached to um, rumours of an executioner project, but it but it hasn't happened. And, and to be honest with you, it does seem quite a dated concept nowadays for uh, for a movie series. So I doubt, I doubt we will ever see an executioner movie, um, but it's a show because it'll be fantastic. Okay, after that then, um, I read um, something, by, uh, something by an author who I don't think is considered that trashy nowadays, but I think he's pretty trashy, and that is Dean Koontz. Uh, so this was Night Chills from 1970-something, 1976, um, and that was back when he had the R in his name, so when he was Dean R. Koontz. Um, this was definitely trashy. Um, so this is about a, um, like a... a shadowy group of of people like scientists and um like industrialists and uh like military types who have developed um this so so they've been working on subliminal advertising and subliminal advertising according to this book is just like completely rife across the whole advertising industry um but they've also produced a drug that makes people more um susceptible to subliminal advertising um and they want to test it, so they they put it into the water of this small town. Um, and the effects of, of this, plus the subliminal advertising, is that if you say like a keyword um, to anyone in the town or anyone who's been exposed to it, they will immediately um, obey your um, obey your commands, whatever you tell them to do. Um, and basically, there's a very one of the people who's involved in this is a completely messed up really dodgy guy who um who uses that to basically um sexually abuse women um and you know commit acts of violence and that's basically that's basically it so it's this weird mix of like 70s conspiracy theory uh thriller and um and some really nasty explicit sexual scenes um, and some other violent scenes as well. You know, there's a few bits where he just makes people, you know, stab themselves through the hands with forks and things like that for, for no real reason, um, just to just to prove his power. Um, there's also some discussion of um, of child abuse in the book, which I found very troubling and and also completely unnecessary. It just didn't feel like it fit in the book at all, really. Um, so all in all, it was it was quite entertaining. It was probably longer than it needed to be at 340 odd pages. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was interesting to to read it and remember who, how Dean Koontz, who I think has got quite a sort of almost like a cosy reputation nowadays. Um, and, um, you know, he's just done a big deal with Amazon and he writes these books nowadays, which are maybe a bit supernaturally, but kind of a bit more thrillery. Um, but you know very inoffensive um, and quite you know he kind of moralizes quite a lot in his books as well um, it's interesting to remember that he did start out writing quite nasty trashy horror like this and and before this so very early in his career wrote under pseudonyms wrote like really quite dodgy pornography um, with his wife um, which is something he admitted I think in early interviews when he kind of was starting to write science fiction um, and, but then later has backed down from and, and denies that he wrote all this all this very dubious porn. Um, but the evidence certainly seems to stack up 
um, in in favour of it of it being true. Um, and yeah, this definitely felt at times like it drew on his his experiences, right, and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it was it was entertaining at times, but a bit unsettling at others. Um, and then finally, I've just finished this one, um, another Men's Adventure books that, uh, book from a series I hadn't heard of before Garb August. So The Sharpshooter, number 11, Trigger Man by Bruno Rossi. I'm fairly sure Bruno Rossi is a pseudonym. Um, yeah, and I don't know how many entries there were in the uh, in the Sharpshooter series, but it doesn't go, it definitely doesn't go anywhere near um, the Executioner series. I think it's probably a couple of dozen. Um, and... Um, this definitely owes you know owes a debt to the executioner. So um, it's about a guy like a lone a lone gunman called um, what's he called Mark Stone I think Rick Stone um, no Johnny Rock <laughs> got it completely wrong um, a, a lone gunman called Johnny Rock who's getting his revenge on the mafia because they've done something horrible I can't even remember what it was um, and in this one there's a there's a, a kind of big mobster who's been in prison who's just got out. Um, and Johnny Rock has got him got his sights set on getting this guy, and and he gets in. So he kills various henchmen along the way. There's a lot of um, kind of a lot, quite a lot of sexual content in this. A lot more than in the executioner books. Um, so the guy is um, the the mafia guy he's going after is like heavily into prostitution. So there's a lot of discussion of kind of that side of his empire, um, and also his personal relationships with with the girls in his stable. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun, and it's I mean it's a fantastic seventies cover, isn't it? I think it's way better than the execution cover. Um, I really do love the cover, although it's got a really really clumsy um, tagline on the front, which I will read to you. Um, the mob's top killer thought he could handle Johnny Rock. He was wrong, and soon he would be dead. <laughs> which just seems um, yeah, it's, that felt felt quite clumsy, and and some of the writing in the book was quite clumsy as well. Um, but it was an entertaining read. I did quite enjoy it. Um, so those are the five things I've read so far for Garb August. Um, we are moving into, so uh, today and tomorrow we're still in Sex and Violence uh, week. Um, from Monday we will move into um, Vintage Week, which is anything written before, um, so trash written before 1980. Um, so the main thing I'm going to be reading, I actually haven't got a paper copy of. I've got it on my Kindle. I need to try and pick up a trashy old battered paperback of it but one of the books that was referenced in the preface to Naked Came the Stranger um, where they talk about you know how the project came about and why they wrote this book um, is The Adventurers by Harold Robbins um, which is um, supposedly full of sex and violence um, according to them anyway I did have another Harold Robbins book um, on my list to read The Carpetbaggers but I'm going to read The Adventurers instead I think because of that um, I will try and read The Carpetbaggers as well either this month or in the future I definitely want to read it because um, it's come heavily recommended to me um, but The Adventurers I've got anyway and it does sound quite interesting it's it's a more of a mix of kind of traditional thriller I think um, and the kind of Harold Robbins style stuff um, so yeah looking forward to, to diving into that and that's like over 700 pages um, so that I think will be my main read this week um, but also got um, a few other things so for the birth year book club um, we're doing Go Ask Alice this month so uh, that was published before 1980 so I think I'm going to try and read that this week if not I'll save it for um, one of the subsequent weeks because uh, I could read it in Anything Goes or WTF to comes with you um, so this is the not true but supposedly true um, Diaries of a Teenage Drug Addict. Um, I've also got this lovely vintage edition of Women's Barracks by Teresca Torres, uh, which is the true account, uh, so her like autobiographical account of her life as a, um, as a girl soldier in the French Army, um, which looks like a lot of fun and that is a fantastic cover. And then I've also got this one which wasn't on my TBR, um, but which came through the post this week and it's really short and it looks amazing. Uh, so it's Witch by Jane Harmon. Um, so Witch stands for We Intend to Create Havoc um, and it's about how feminists are, uh, have like taken over the UK basically um, and are humiliating men. So it sounds just awful but really entertaining. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to try and read that um, as well this week if I can. Um, okay, so... What have we got uh, channel-wise? So, 
Um, in the last week or so, so my Sunday bollocks video last week um, was about why readers should seek out trash, why they should read trash rather than avoiding it. Um, on Monday we had the Happy Garb August video, which I love doing. It was fantastic to do to be able to do a video that had subscribers in it um, as well as other booktubers. Um, I really, really enjoyed putting it together. So a huge thanks to everyone who's involved in that. Uh, it was an absolute joy to do. Um, on Tuesday I did the book to movie adaptation tag that was created by Michael Romeo Talks Books. Um, on Wednesday we had episode two of Ask Criminally. Um, where I answered various questions from viewers. Um, and as always, if you've got questions you'd like me to answer in one of those videos, put them in the comments with Ask Criminally at the start of them or email me at criminally at gmail.com. Um, and then on Thursday, I had a review of a non-trashy book. Well, maybe it is trashy, actually. Um, I don't think it's trashy. Um, the Laws of the Skies by Grégoire Courtois, whose name I'm still sure I'm mispronouncing. I need to find a video about him on YouTube and, and see how to pronounce his name, which is a very, very disturbing book um, about a group of school, school children um, who go into the woods um, and with, with some teachers on a, like an overnight camping expedition and all die. And that's basically the book. Um, I forgot to say in my review, so in the UK, for some reason, it is being marketed as a cross between Winnie the Pooh and the Blair Witch Project, which is just ludicrous because it bears no resemblance to either of those things. I, the, only, the only thing that's similar is it's set in the woods, but there's no like supernatural element. Um, there's definitely nothing like Winnie the Pooh other than the fact it's got kids in it. It's just a very, very strange couple of books to have chosen, or a couple of things to have chosen to compare it to. Um, so yeah, bad, but, you know, def a definite black mark for the, uh, for the publishers there for coming up with a, t a terrible couple of books to compare it to. And I hate it when publishers just compare books to other books rather than actually saying what they're about. Um, anyway, enough, <laughs> enough of me ranting about publishers. Um, on, and yesterday, so Friday, um, I did a, I did do a trashy review, so I did my review of Naked and the Stranger, which I've just talked about, um, which was which was quite fun to do, and I do I do rant about critics a bit um, in that one. Um, what I, and, and I just wanted to clarify because maybe I wasn't entirely clear in the video when I was ranting about critics, I was ranting about the critics who wrote Naked and the Stranger, not critics in general. Um, so yeah, that's what we've had in the last week or so. Um, in the week ahead, so Sunday Bollocks tomorrow um, is going to be life lessons that I've learned from trashy books. Um, on Monday, I'm doing my unboxing of the August uh, box from the Abominable Book Club. Um, and apologies in advance for that video. Um, I tried filming it in my office again. So anyone who you know watches the channel will know my office is being redecorated, um, which is why I'm filming down here. I thought I'd try filming a video in my office, but from a different angle than I normally film from for various reasons. And it just, the, the video came out terribly in terms of like the the framing of the shot. Um, so I'm like holding the books and you can only see half of them and things like that. Um, so uh, sincere apologies for that. Um, I think I managed to kind of fix it, um, but because it was an unboxing video, I couldn't refilm it. Um, because you can, only, you can only do an unboxing once. Um, I, I suppose I could have put everything back in the box, but that would have felt very artificial. Um, so yes, anyway, you've got that on Monday. Um, on Tuesday, I did the To Die For tag, which is where you talk about books you want to buy. Um, on Wednesday, we've got episode three of Ask Criminally. Um, on Thursday, I've got a review of a 90s horror novel called Blackburn by Bradley Denton. Um, and then on Friday, um, we've got um, my video on why did I buy 39 NASCAR romances, <laughs> which is quite entertaining to film as well. Um, so yeah, that's what's coming up um, in the week ahead on the channel, and that's what's been up in the past week in case you missed it. Okay, time for another random book from the shelves then. So here we have a very well-known book, um, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. So I've chosen to, to talk about this one briefly today because it's the only Dickens book I've read, uh, which is really awful and I need to read more. Um, so yes, I read this, I enjoyed it. Um, it's, yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's, it's one of those ones that's spoiled a bit because you know the story, um, but it was an entertaining read and I definitely need to read some more Charles Dickens at some point, but I'm maybe not gonna rush to. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Um, I've got a busy week ahead of me um, outside of uh, the world of BookTube. 
Um, so I have got videos queued up, um, but I may be, so you'll get content every day, but I may be slow, even slower than normal in replying to comments. Um, so apologies if I am, um, but I will catch up again as soon as I can, I promise. Um, but yeah, aside from that, let me know if you've read any of the books I talked about today. Let me know what you've been reading for Carl Borgus. Let me know if you're enjoying it. I really hope you are. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well. I hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.